Welcome to the sixth episode of a series where I'm upgrading my mini lathe. In this episode, I'll be replacing the ESC and seeing if there's any change in the behavior. We will then take a close look at the planning for the wiring loom in preparation for some serious building. So let's get straight to it. So here's where I'm at. Nothing much has progressed. I've put the shunt uh, for the current measurement here. I've got a couple of leads coming out here. I'll, I'll probably change it a little bit later. But unfortunately I didn't have on hand anything uh, useful to measure the current and convert it into a voltage that the, uh, the blue pill can read. So I'm going to put that on hold and unfortunately it's going to take a couple of weeks before the necessary parts arrive. So instead I'm going to move on to uh, working on this layout here and uh, try and mount some things up and uh, maybe build this into a circuit board. Everything integrated, see how it goes. Anyway, the the shunt I'll probably try and stick it down under here and the power supply will go on the front here and I'll probably have the control panel up here on the top. I also have received a, a replacement ESC. The first one of these that arrived, it smoked and then on the second try it actually it works and this is currently working with the smoked ESC right now. So I don't know really what happened but clearly something has burnt out and it's probably you know not applying all of the phases or something like that when it's turning so hopefully after changing this I might even see a little bit more performance improvement and uh, in the worst case at least I know that I've got something that's not got some fried parts in it that's uh, operating in the system so that'll be quite good. So I finished replacing the ESC the one that was uh, fried and surprise surprise actually there was a difference um, before when I was starting the chuck it would always make a weird, occasionally make a weird noise and wouldn't start properly. But now, it will always start, even if I start slowly. See? Before it would like, get stuck in between the phase and go beep 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 beep, but now it'll actually just... go every time. And the second thing that's changed... So before I was getting a chuck speed of up to around about uh, 1200 RPM in uh, low gear and now it's like 1330 or so. Uh, the motor was spinning around about 4200, now it's spinning at 4800. So clearly an improvement there. So that, that was, uh, that's a good result. So I finished measuring the, the power supply and all of the uh, layout of the, uh, of the lathe itself. But one of the things that I haven't got completed yet is the actual uh, microcontroller and uh, display panel block. So I can't actually measure that. So I decided to move on and actually build all of this into a single board. So my objective is to get all of this so it fits into this footprint. So this will be fundamentally the size and the shape of the uh, microcontroller and the control panel block and uh, the way I'm going to do that is I've found uh, this uh, little IC socket which I've had on hand for a while and it actually fits perfectly for the blue pill so what I'll do is I'll mount that here and I'll mount it so that the display floats above the, uh, the microcontroller itself and I'll mount all the other remaining electronics here so that it sits under the display and uh, then I'll have a row of buttons and I've got these uh, old buttons which I've salvaged off a um, computer display so I'll just reuse these buttons and so hopefully everything will fit in here and once I have everything uh, mounted and fitted onto here uh, then I can design a plastic shell uh, to go around this as a part of that I obviously needed to figure out how I'm going to connect this to the to the lathe itself and so I had to figure out the wiring loom. Now, the current wiring loom uh, with this D sub 15 has worked fine for the testing, but actually it has a, a few issues which I noticed later on. Primarily, my original idea was that I could uh, remove the motor block, the whole block, by removing these four, four screws and then be able to remove the motor block. But with this wiring loom like this, obviously there's no way to disconnect here, so that's a bit of a mistake. So I decided to go and have a, a review of the whole uh, loom and wire block situation. So. And this is what we've got here basically. We have the 110 volt power block 
coming in, which will have the fuse and the main switch, everything in here, providing the 110 volts into the power supply. The power supply provides um, a uh, the main power to the controller block, but it also provides some sense information. So there will be a connector here, so the power supply block can be uh, removed um, without having to uh, disconnect and remove the whole loom. So there will be a connector here, which is already on the power supply. Uh, this this connector here. Beyond that, the power supply will provide the 24 volts, which will go to the motor block. And so the minus line goes directly to the motor block and there's a, uh, a connector here, XT60, which will allow me to remove the motor block um, by disconnecting here. And the plus side goes through a fuse and through the current sense module, which we don't have right now because I'm waiting on that uh, current sense IC, but the current sense module will include the current sense uh, IC co-located with the module to ensure there's no uh, to ensure I can get an accurate sense, I'm thinking it's better to co-locate it here. And then after the 24 volt rail passes through the current sense, it comes back out through the XT60 connector into the motor block. So we can disconnect here and uh, remove the motor block. And then the current sense has a data line which provides information to the controller block. And the controller block obviously provides the 5 volt rail for the current sense ICs to work. On the motor block itself, I will add a smaller connector. Currently the D sub connector is probably too big to fit through this little hole here. Um, so I'll come up with a smaller connector for that. And I'll remove, currently the chuck sense is, co is connected into this connector. So by isolating that allows me to disconnect the XT60 and this small connector here and then remove the motor block um, complete just by removing those four screws. And then the current sense which is mounted inside uh, the back of the chuck here as well. If I wanted to remove that for maintenance, I need to have a connector, so I'll add an independent connector here. And so with these one, two, three, and four connectors going into this main loop loom, I will connect into the control block with a, I decided to use a D sub uh, 15 connector. And uh, the male and females are all marked as indicated here. So in total, there are six sensors and two control lines that we have to deal with. So the six sensors here actually only is five physical connections because the uh, the two two uh, temperature sensors can be a common bus. So that's only five and two, so that's seven. And then you could do plus or minus on the rail. So in theory, this would be fine with a D sub nine connector. Um, but right now I'm thinking to use a D sub fifteen connector, uh, and for two reasons. One is connector stability um, because I'm thinking that I may be able to use the connector to uh, provide the mounting position for the for the uh, controller block itself, and the second is expandability. If I if I want to add anything else in the future, obviously the D sub nine is going to mean there's no connections whatsoever uh, available on the connector, so there's no ability to expand feature functionality in the future. So I think I'll go with the D sub uh, fifteen connector. Looking at the individual blocks. Um, these individual blocks data connectors and what they hold. Here I have the power supply block, 5 volt rail, ground, the 24 volt uh, supply sense which is in effect uh, comes out about 3 volts as I've shown before. Fan temperature, uh, uh, one wire connection and the PWM control coming from the microcontroller to control the fan. Uh, the chuck sense is just ground 5 volts and the opto signal coming back. The motor block will look like this, it'll be 5 volt ground, I'll have a, a, a keying uh, hole here so that I can't get the connector backwards. Um, the motor hall sensor, the motor uh, temperature or the motor cabin te temperature and the uh, motor PWM control. And on the current sense I'll be just providing the 5 volts uh, rail and the uh, signal coming back as an analog signal. And so right now I've laid it out, it looks something like this, so that the uh, motor control, PWM and the fan control is over here on the left. Uh, I've added some ground isolation on, on opposite sides to try to isolate the signals a little bit, so it's a minimum, some sort of ability to sh provide a little bit of shielding within the connector, or at least some separation to minimize the uh, transients getting across. And then the 5 volt rails and in the middle here we have the uh, motor hall uh, effect sensor and the chucks opto sensor for getting the speed. In the bottom here we have the single um, 
one wire connection common bus for the two temperature sensors and on the right hand side we have the two uh, analog style inputs uh, which will be converted to analog to digital so I've tried to keep them out of the, out of the noise zone effectively uh, one is that supply sense rail and the other is the uh, motor's current sense well that's about it for this episode not a whole lot of building going on but as the pieces of the puzzle come together definitive design work becomes both possible and necessary but we'll be making up for the lack of building in the next episode where we'll be putting together the main controller board and it should be fun so I hope to see you then